Yo, what up YouTube, it's your boy Gravis. In today's tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to get a fuller drum sound. So, previously, I've never used a compressor before on my drums. I was just picking up good drums, good sounding drums. So today, let's break the rules and let's experiment with new stuff. So I've been watching tutorials of guys or professionals using um compressors on their drum bass. So first of all, I have these interesting drums. Oh yeah, so this is a very good drum, okay? Now, I'm gonna route all of them to their input in the channel. So that, um, yeah, so this one, two, three, four, Five, six. I mean, all these. We don't need all these. All right. So now let's see all in the all uh, the mixer. So all the drums are playing nicely. Okay. Let's make a quick um balance of the drums. Alright, so what we have to do, just we have to write all these, all these um, faders to a bus. We have to create a new bus. So the way to do that, just um, in Apple Studio, it's pretty simple. Just put your mouse on this little arrow, arrow right there. And then right click and it says route to this track only. So now it's going to be routed to this track. So when I mute this track, you won't hear nothing. Alright, so I'll be doing that for the rest of the drums. So let's make everything professional. Start by typing names. So I'm gonna call this, um, let's say, I'm just gonna write drums. Yeah, let me Give it a lot of colors. I love colors. Colors are awesome. They make things simple and clear. Yeah, just like that. So I'm going to do the rest. Just like how I did. Oh yeah, just like that. So I hope. So now everything is routed to this um, drum bass. If I mute it, now you can hear nothing. Though. That means this is the main, main part. This is the main volume of all drums combined together. So now let's start working on how to make them, the drums sound very big in your ears, on your speakers. So it's really, really simple according to researchers. Now let's see. So I'm going to go ahead and add a, on the drum bass, I'm going to go ahead and add a compressor. So how does that work? So we will use a native compressor. So it's called the free T compressor, free T compressor. Okay. So how do you do that? You have to lower your ratio a little bit more. Just start listening. So if you are a completely beginner, what I recommend is just get a, a visual compressor because on this thing, you can't see the meters. All you see is just moving the numbers around and use your ears. But uh, for beginners, I suggest you get a, a visual compressor. Okay. So even if I move this, it won't affect anything because uh, there's nothing that's going on. This is the threshold where the compressor start compressing. So next thing is the ratio. So you have to put this really hard to make sure you can hear all the transient and ambient of the sound. Oh yeah, now we are affecting the drums. Before, after. 
so our drums just decreased the volume a little bit so now we are affecting it so now we gotta make a, a fast attack but let's not make any numbers let's just listen by ears and let's tell what's good Yeah, we gotta make a fast release in this case. So I'm compressing very hard, okay? So you can choose from hard to uh, medium vintage, soft, hard, right, medium, or medium. So let's go to very hard. So now as you can hear, our drums just uh, decreased a volume a little bit. So the secret sauce here is to add the backup gain so this will bring the drums more up front and fuller so in this case i will go really hard but let's listen i don't have specific i mean i don't have specific numbers my breath was getting out So right now I'm playing with um, the attack so that you can hear the differences. So slow attacks more uh, transient goes into the drums and then you see now we can hear everything clearly. But fast attacks now we are getting uh, too much compressor. Oh yeah, I was very wrong. So on the release, this is the secret sauce. So on the release button, make sure the release is slow so that uh, uh, it will take time so that you will be listening all the ambient or transient of the sound. all right so that's one way of making your drums will like punching hard and big in your ears okay now let's hear the before and after so here is the before and here's the after So we compressed it a little bit more harder, but you can go easy on these effects, but on drums, it, it don't really matter. Yeah, because nobody's going to tell these drums will sound so awesome. So what you have to do, just uh, let's go a little bit, not too much, okay? So on my right corner here, all I'm doing is playing with this number to see the good and beautiful spot. Here is with no effects at all. And oh yeah, I think I'll be doing this oh, almost on all my drums. Not every time, but almost. Oh, sometimes they call this parallel compression. So I will be doing this so that uh, i'll be getting some punchy drums and bigger sound drums yeah so guys um if you have any tips if you have any tips on how it works with your drums how to make your drums sound really big in your ears how to make the drums eat harder 
very punchy just make sure you put a comment down the section below and we will appreciate it another secret for drums i tend to put a, a reverb on my claps Yeah, I'm looking for the claps. Oh, okay. So what I'm going to do to make your clap sounds good, first of all, I'm going to go a little bit clinical. And I'm going to roll down my, um, uh, my high pass filter. Yeah, let's cut down just, yep. So to make this sound awesome, I can go ahead and add a reverb on the channel itself directly. So what I do there, I'm gonna take the Freely Reverb 2. Listen. Now I'm gonna make it very big. And then I'm gonna control the decay. A little bit and make it a little bit shorter so now we can hear the differences here is uh without any processing and then here is with processing of course i was doing some exaggerations to make sure you can hear all the effects so what we have to do just come right here and then on the wetness level, just to bring it down slightly, play it and listen by ears. So to better mix it with the rest of the song, you gotta play everything in context. So that's the key. Almost, all, almost always just use everything in context because sometimes there is some specific sounds that sounds really good when they are in solo. But when you play everything together, they tend to bring some problems, okay? So don't be that guy. So now, the reverb is so exaggerated. And now, use the wetness level to bring it down. That's with nothing. Now we go a little bit. Don't be afraid to go crazy. Play with it. Alright, for me that sounds good. So to give you to show you what I'm doing, I'm gonna play with all these instrumentals, guitars and pianos. Now you have you you know what I'm talking about. <music> Now because I'm playing everything together, starting with all the key, the drums and all the sounds, everything sounds together. So now we cannot hear the um uh the reverb that we put on our clap. So what happened if what happened if I put a lot of wetness? Now it's gonna bring some problems to, to the rest of the mix. Okay. Now that's too much. Let's try to play the piano. Now 
now we can hear it. So what will happen if I just go ahead and activate all this instrument? So now we can barely hear it. It blends nicely all together with the rest of the tracks. So that's the secret to make your drum sounds even bigger. It's not all about only by using oh, the compressions or other stuff. There is, I mean, sometimes on a lot of, oh, what do you call it? Snares, claps, sometimes hi-hat or rims, short or conga. Sometimes you got to use the reverb a lot of times, a lot of times, not sometimes, a lot of times you've got to use some sort of reverb or whether it's big or short just use a reverb but that's gonna help you to widen your mixes more stereo okay and then now you can be like now we can now hear the reverb okay but it's still there you can still feel it so now let's see if we uh just take off the reverb you see now it sounds more more flat Nothing to it, but not even wide enough. But now let's see the after. All right. So if you just starting out, sometimes it's really hard to uh, to 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 listen to all those small details because it takes time to to make your ears be able to comprehend all things that's going on. Because on uh, the the. The music or the track it's all about 3d so the, we are not 3d artists but the music's in concept it's like a 3d models so he has a uh, the front the back uh, and the sides okay so that means you gotta make it to make a full sound or to sounds bigger now you gotta control what is sounding in the back what's in front and what's in on the side left all right now guys so now the concept is to make your sounds or your drums or your song or your whatever you're working on to make them sounds bigger first thing compress them like what we did in this scenario after if you run a use a compressor for well, that's totally fine what you have to do just uh pen your stuff left to right put some uh, instrumentals to your left others to the right others to the center that's cr that, that creates a particular 3d vision inside your your head so when you play everything together it will sounds like it's three dimension okay three dimensions so guys that's how we do it just make sure you, you start using reverbs on your drums give your drums a little bit wetness okay to make them sound full and bigger so that's all we have for today's tutorial guys if you have any question if you did not understand anything if you are still a completely beginner who have never touched anything just make sure you comment down to the section comment just write your question your concern and then uh, maybe next time we go much slower or very deep and then make you understand the lesson much better so that's all we have for today it's your boy Kravis. see you next time